Are you sick of buying a basil plant from the supermarket only to watch the bleeding thing die within only a couple of weeks? This has to be one of the most frustrating things in the entire world, right? Well, sort of. I mean, you buy a live pot of basil thinking you'll be making pasta and pesto all summer long, only to find the thing has melted into a complete mess only a couple of weeks later. If this is happening to you and you're stressing, not knowing why, then don't worry, my plant friend. It's nothing you're doing wrong. You see, you've been set up to fail by the grower, so you can blame them instead. This used to happen to me every time I brought home a basil plant from the store and it used to really drive me nuts until I figured out what the problem was and all my basil growing problems were eased. So I'm going to share with you what the problem is and how you can easily solve it in this video. And this video is sponsored by Squarespace and more on them in a jiffy. So here we have a classic pot of basil that I've just bought from the supermarket. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? It's in pretty good nick with nice, lush, plump green leaves and firm stems. The soil looks halfway decent and it looks like the spotty teenagers at the store have been watering it when needed, which is as close to a miracle as you'll ever see. Most people pop this on their kitchen windowsill, of course, and hope for the best, only to find it scrapping for survival a few days later. So what's the problem? I mean, it's in a bright spot with lots of sun, it gets watered by you when it needs it, and yet it gives up the ghost pretty quickly. The problem is, is that the growers have been too generous to you. Yeah, they've given you too much plant and it's destined to suffer because of it. Let me explain. Have a close look at the stems of this plant. How many are there? I count a whopping 10 stems, and this is par for the course for a basil plant you buy at a supermarket. It's even pretty normal at your local garden centre too, actually. Now, these stems are all individual plants. But that's good, right? You're getting more bang for your buck, surely? Well, all these stems are individual plants with their own individual root systems. And check out the pot they all live in. Pretty tiny, isn't it? And that's the problem. There are just far too many plants fighting for nutrients and water all in the same little pot. They scramble and fight so much that they end up all killing one another not pretty. In an ideal world, a basil plant wants to enjoy the single life and live in a bachelor pad all by itself. It has no interest in sharing the bed with 10 other housemates. When we pull this guy's trousers down and have a look at the roots, we can kind of see the problem more clearly. And by the way, did you know that Sheffield May Plants has its very own website and using Squarespace to set it all up was a breeze and Squarespace have actually sponsored this video. Now I had no idea where to even begin with all this website malarkey, but Squarespace made it all so easy with easy to use templates and tools to make it all look pretty and actually function like a website. We've all got things we'd love to share with the world. So why not head over to squarespace.com for a free trial to check it all out yourself and leave your mark on the world. And when you're ready to launch your very own little empire, follow my link in the description to bag yourself a 10% discount off your first purchase of a website or domain. Happy creating. So where does one plant's roots begin and another's end? It's one big mess in there and they're all fighting for the same soil and nutrients. It's survival of the fittest and sadly no one ends up surviving. So that's the problem exposed. I'm now going to show you how to solve it. And then after that, I've got a nifty little trick that you need to do to your plant so that you have the bushiest basil in the neighborhood. So this is a dead easy process to fix this problem. The first thing we want to do is get the plant out of its existing pot. And as I say, there's loads of stems in here, about 10 or so. And we need to prise these apart to separate them. It's gonna be a bit tricky because they're basically all grown in the same space and all the roots entangled amongst each other. So you can kind of rip into them a little bit. It's a bit tricky to get this perfectly done. We just want to separate these plants as best as you can. So we've got two here, we've got more than two actually, we've got four. So I'm just dividing roughly where the stem is. So that is one plant there that will pot up into its own pot. Then grow on to be a nice healthy basil plant. So that's a good one there. I've got three more in here. So this one, you've got these little baby seedlings. So these are quite small, so they won't amount to that much. This one's a little bit bigger than some more that are in there. So the choice is yours, whether you want to keep that and put that on separately. But the bigger ones, I normally aim for the bigger ones because they're the ones that are going to yield the most basil further down the line because they're further, furthest along. And there's another one that's a nice healthy basil plant there. Because you're ripping some of the roots apart, you might lose one or two basil plants that you pot up. But you should be able to keep most of them alive. 
So there's another clump here. So I'm just dividing the bigger sections into smaller sections and then teasing apart carefully. These little baby offshoots here, you can just remove. They're not gonna to amount to anything. So your focus should be to get the biggest plants in the pot out and get those roots intact as best as possible because they're the best chance that you're gonna get a decent basil plant like that one. So I've got lots of root tissue on the end of that stem. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight basil plants here that will all grow on to be nice, big, bushy plants in an ideal world. So I've got some individual pots here and the aim of the game is just to pot each of these basil plants. So I've got some cyber soil premium universal mix that you can buy from the Cybertanica website. I've got a 10% discount linked in the description to this video. So you can bag yourself that using my referral link. Just a base layer at the bottom of the pot. Get your basil plant, plonk it in. Just gonna get rid of those lower leaves because I think they will go by the wayside anyway. And you want more or less where the soil line is there to be the same soil, soil line when you put the soil in. And that is one basil plant there. So that'll grow on to be nice and healthy. So I can put that to one side for the time being while I do the other plants here. Okay, so I've got six nice and healthy basil plants now. They're not fighting for their own soil, water and nutrients. All that soil and nutrients in this pot is now dedicated to keeping this single plant alive. And that is gonna be a much happier plant. All that's left to do now is to give each of these a good drink. You want to give them a good drink so that the soil settles in around the root ball and it gets rid of any air gaps in the soil. If there's gaps in the soil after you water it, you can always just top up like so. There's no real need to water again after I've just topped up with that soil. And there it is. So these just need to go to a nice bright spot in my house on a windowsill, sunny windowsill. And we should start to see some strong new growth coming from these plants. Right, now that the dividing and repotting has been done and you've got a collection of basil plants on your hands all ready to go in the windowsill, it's time for that trick I mentioned earlier to get the bushiest basil in the neighborhood. It involves getting a nice clean pair of pruners out and giving the central stem a chop just like this. Don't panic or turn off the video in disgust. This chop is precisely what the doctor ordered. Look, I'll put my money where my mouth is and do it to every single one of my newly potted up plants. Notice where I made the cut on the stem, right above a set of baby leaves. Before the cut, all the growth hormones were telling the plant to continue growing that central stem nice and long. The problem is though, that that one stem can only produce a certain amount of tasty leaves. Cutting that stem interrupts that growth signal and sends it to the next available leaf nodes. So those little leaves just where I made the cut will turn into the dominant stems. And instead of having one dominant stem producing leaves, you now got two, win and you don't have to stop there. A regular cutting back of the stems just multiplies the growth potential even further until you've got basil taking over your kitchen. Make a cut, allow the new stems to grow two or three sets of leaves and then cut each of those stems and so on and so on. And you need to cut low down on the first stem for this to really work its magic. If you cut too high, then the plant tends to get a bit lanky. Not a disaster by any means, it's just best to start nice and low. Now there is yet another trick you can do to basil to get even more bang for your buck and I cover it all in the video linked on the screen now. So click on it so you don't miss out and subscribe for more fun. See you next time.